Barry said if a conducive environment for tertiary education is not developed, MOPS's efforts in establishing quality and equity in basic and secondary education may not be rewarding at the end. Suleiman Keta is the principal of Amitage Senior Secondary School. His school could be one of the 14 schools to get a surprise visit by the CCM, but Keta is ever prepared. This board and the cupboard behind him displays data and files the coordinating committee delegates always check in schools. To cater, the CCM is a blessing. CCM came at the right time because um, if you look at education, all that we are yearning for is quality. And then if you look at um, the results since CCM started up to date, both in lower, upper and senior secondary school, there is significant um, improvement in those areas. Because I could remember when I was going to Kaur, uh, because of CCM and uh, this monitoring issue, um, we've tried our level best because then the results from the upper basic, normally the best results would have been aggregate um, 30 something. But then when I went there, because of the CCM, we've improved from that 30, we improved up to aggregate 9 as the best results. One issue this CCM will be looking at is the school improvement grant. Funds raised by the government to take off the boarding of school fees from parents. The scheme started in 2013 2014 academic year with the lower basic schools. Delegates want to know whether schools within the region are using the grant as well as its impact. This year, it's like a difference for our mode of preparation really focused on the school grants because school grants, once it has started for this particular year, we, we really made sure that all schools access their school grants and also, we monitor them in the way they spend I mean, the, their school grants based on their plans. The CCM has the monitoring arm of the ministry in relation to policy implementation in schools. MOPSI believed could be instrumental in the realization of both standard and quality education for all. Louis Mendy, GRTS. Third Deputy Assistant Secretary, Bureau of African Affairs at the United States Department of State has been holding talks with senior government officials, business executives and civil society organizations. Bisa Williams, who was on a four-day visit, spoke to journalists towards the end of her trip. Almud Bajan was among them and this is his report. In the Bureau of African Affairs of the United States Department of State, Bisa Williams, convened a press conference at the American Corner. The aim of Das Williams' press conference was to discuss and answer questions relating to her trip and the current state of relations between the United States and the Gambia. And that policy focuses on four pillars. Strengthening democratic institutions, spurring economic growth, trade and investment, advancing peace and security, and promoting opportunity and development. The U.S. wishes to advance these policy goals in the Gambia through our long-standing bilateral relationship. Having served in many U.S. diplomatic missions around the globe, Das Williams, who has a rich background in diplomacy, is responsible for West Africa and African policy issues. The press conference also engaged the U.S. Saturday Affair, Richard T. Yonieka, as well as students from several institutions, including Khadija to A.M. Diba of the University of the Gambia. It is a testament to the relationship my country has with the Gambia, a relationship that goes well back beyond independence, um, well back into the 1800s. Um, this was one of our NASA landing zones for many years, which was a testimony again to the resources that were available here, that we could even contemplate an emergency landing of the space shuttle. Um, we've had a relationship, a partnership with Peace Corps. Uh, my question is that you are an ambassador in another country. How is leadership to you? As part of her stay in the Gambia from the 1st to the 4th of February, the American diplomat has also been meeting with government officials, business people, and members of civil society. This is all geared towards strengthening the long-standing bilateral ties between Banjul and Washington. I want to take some time to, to applaud 
the government of the Gambia's investments in health, education, and immunizations to prevent diseases. These investments are important to helping all Gambians achieve prosperity and to contribute to the overall development of the country. The U.S. will continue to partner with the Gambia to achieve our collective goals in these areas. The people-to-people -people interaction between the United States and the Gambia is stronger than ever before, and Sharjah Yamioka alluded to that. The rationale of Das Williams' visit, which mainly sought to further cement the cooperation shared by the Gambia and the United States, is highly anticipated by many to further bear fruit. Modu Bayan, GRTS News. Well, time now to take our first break. We'll be back with news from outside the Gambia. The Gambia Tourism Board proudly presents the second edition of the Food and Beverage Festival in the Smiley Coast of Africa, the Gambia. Date on Saturday and Sunday, February 8th and February 9th, 2014. The second edition of the Food and Beverage Festival will be happening at the Green Mamba Gardens and Jacarlo Bar and Restaurant in Senegambia. Entertainment will be provided by the King of Kora, Jaliba Kuyate and the Kumari Band will be present. Food and Beverage Festival at home world. Eight and nine better than you. Have a killer syndrome and there will be a lot of There will be live performances by Gambian, artists, drummers, acrobats, singing competition, eating competition, wrestling competition, and many more. Prepare yourself for local and international cuisines, for they will be there in abundance. Entrance fee is only $100. Proudly sponsored by Banjil Breweries and... Welcome back and over now to the international scene. Our semblance of calm has returned to the capital of the Central African Republic, but there are reports of sporadic gunfire. Refugees uprooted by sectarian violence are streaming into neighboring Cameroon. President Catherine Samba Prenzer has stated that those responsible for the carnage must pay for their actions. We have more in the CFI report. Thousands of refugees from the Central African Republic are heading for Cameroon. On foot or motorbike or packed into overcrowded trucks, thousands of Muslims are fleeing sectarian violence ravaging the country, leaving everything behind. They arrive at the Garua Bulai camp with nothing to their names. There's nothing to eat. There's no soap. There are no blankets. We are suffering. Red Cross volunteers attempt to register the new arrivals. Many are families that have been driven apart by the violence. Family members may be reunited here after weeks of being separated. There are husbands who left their wives or their children. They fled in a panic. The Central African capital of Bangui appears calm, although every now and again gunfire can be heard. Roadmen carry out their work as if nothing has happened. Those who choose to return find their neighborhoods in ruin. Even the well-known photographer Samuel Fosa was not spared. His studio was ransacked and all of his work destroyed. Central Africans pillaged this house. Christians knew who he was. He lived here. He did his photography here for years. But the return to normality is superficial. The president of the country, Catherine Samba Panza, inspected the troops during a ceremony commemorating the reconstitution of the Central African Army. Her speech to the soldiers was frank. After a certain point, I think that each person must answer for his actions. Let me warn all those who continue to spread chaos in this country. Soon after the ceremony, members of the FACA attacked a civilian. They accused the young man of having deserted to join the ranks of the Seleka rebellion. He was lynched on the spot and his body dragged through the street. At least seven suspected militants and one policeman have been killed in a raid on an alleged militant hideout in a Tunis suburb. Their military operation that lasted several hours comes barely a week after the Constituent Assembly adopted Tunisia's new constitution. The dead, a CFI reports, include a man wanted in connection with the killing of politicians 
Chokri Belaid and Mohammed Bahru.